felters and welcome. My name is Philippa. Today I'm going to show you seven different types of needle felting mats. It's a question I get asked all the time. What is the best mat to use? So let's show you some of them and I'll show you the good things and maybe the not so good things about each one. Let's get started. So first up, the cheapest type of mat that you could use is literally a sponge. You could get any sponge and you could start using that. It will break up very quickly and it could well end up breaking up and going into your felted item, so I don't recommend it. Next up we have a foam like this, which is more an upholstery foam, or this comes in a lot of starter kits, a sort of black, slightly denser foam. These are very cheap for you when you are a beginner, so these are great to start with. So this is the foam mat, it's super easy to use, it's a really good size this one. Like I said, some of the starter kits can come with a lot smaller ones. Personally, I prefer this slightly larger size. They're about five, six, seven pounds. They provide good resistance because they're really quite firm, but yet a needle can pierce it if you were to sort of go through the item. You try not to go through your item too much. Um, when you're making ears and things like that, of course, they do stick to them a bit, but you just have to keep peeling them off. They won't last you forever because this will wear down. Sometimes if um, it's not a good foam, some of these bits will break off and end up in your needle felted item. But as a beginner mat, it's a really, really good one. Next up is a burlap or hessian type mat and again they are a very cost effective needle felting mat to have. You can make them yourself very easily or you can buy them flat and then fill it with what you want. Uh, I use, you can use polyester sort of toy stuffing in them, that works well. People have said buckwheat, I put buckwheat in this one, I have to say the bits went everywhere and kept coming out. So now I have filled it up with rice and it is really heavy really substantial i do quite like it this has got a double layer hessian over it to stop bits from coming out it still didn't work with the um, buckwheat or you can buy a quite a thin weave of this and that works quite well and it's got a little zip there so the burlap or hessian mat is again a good one it provides good resistance this one like i said it's got the rice in it it makes quite a noise when you felt into it um it again when you are felting the ears it will they will stick to them and again you're going to have to peel them off regularly just to show you some people excuse me like to cover their mats with a piece of linen so when you are doing a white color you will place this um, piece of cloth on it so that this will be protected and you won't get loads of bits of wool in there because obviously if you're using black and then you go to use white on top of it you'll end up felting some black into the white so you'll use different cloths for different colors and that's a very good little system and it prolongs the mats so that would work really really well um, I don't like this one with the rice in as much because it's not firm it is sort of moving away at times but um, it is a much bigger step up from the foam mats and it will last you um, a lot longer. Next up is the brush mat. It is um, a really solid plastic and then a great big piece of brush. They are, I think personally, much better for 2D or flat felting. You can use them if you're doing um, an animal coat, sort of a pelt that you're going to put over onto an animal. They are fairly expensive. I will just show you this one in action, but it's not my most favourite. Um, I'm pleased I bought it and I've got it, but I really uh, don't use it much. I do 3D sculptures. Let's show you this one. So the brush mat in action. Um, I really, uh, some people do use it for 3D sculptures. I feel that the wool sticks to it and it almost pulls the wool back out when you're going across it. It's got sort of a tackiness to it. And if you can see there, it's um, definitely pulled up all the wool. So for 3D sculptures, I don't think it's the best. So if you were going to do something flat, this is a punch tool. Um, and the beauty, yes, it's noisy, but the beauty is there is absolutely no resistance for the needles when you felt. So they go straight through. Um, and that's why it works so well if you were doing something flat. And then you have to peel it off and I'd probably do the other side as well. 
a little bit more and then you sort of you could build up colors and it's if you're doing like a 2d picture or something but if you're doing a coat for an animal and you wanted to build up colors and then you would put that not on this one but on top of the animal and felt it on so that's more what the brush tool is for in my eyes you may you maybe you use it uh, for 3d sculptures let me know there we go so now we're going to get into the mats that actually are made of wool or felt themselves and these really do work better but they are slightly more expensive but they do last a lot lot longer this one here has got felt on either side so it's got a light side for when you're using light colors a dark side for using dark colors this is made by annie's hand felted creations and i've mentioned her before as i said everything will be linked in the description below if you are interested in any of these mats this has got a soft filling in it i don't know what it is but it's probably a, a polyester toy filling but it's firm enough for when you are felting it's a really good size it's not too big it's nice and light and in the beginning i used this for ages and i've used it an awful lot and you really can't tell that there's much wear on this and it cleans up quite wear quite well i'll show you this now so here we have the two pieces of felt together which um, is really good you've got the light and you've got the dark and it's just a very comfortable good sized mat it's the right height for me i feel it's very ergonomic if that's a thing you can sort of say with needle felting mats um, it's the rice is really quite heavy it does make a bit of a noise but um, i don't feel i go through to it that much but it's got a nice resistance holding the item for you and again you can use pieces of cloth if you want to protect it and change them with each color especially if you're using like a pink or a red some sort of big color that you don't really want on your mat see I used a pink there and it's still in there a bit just to show you how I clean these mats a lot of the time I will use this uh, lint remover and it's fantastic it works does a really good job and it just pulls off some of the top layers of pieces you can use uh, sellotape sort of cleaning it like that you can use the hoover you can use rubber gloves people sort of get the rubber gloves on and do that um, so there's various ways and in a minute I'll show you her, the mat cleaner for the makers as well so yeah very good mat so following on we have the there we go that way around we have the makers earth mat and I have seen a lot of people use this and a lot of people say they are very very happy with it you get them in two layers so you need a base layer that is quite firm and quite coarse you cannot use just this because um, coarser needles will not go into it so when you are felting the needle literally stops and it, it just doesn't work on its own and then you get a soft layer and this is the layer that um, you might have to replace after time this one should last you an awful long time and it works as a sort of two layer system this one is um, it's eco it's compostable the top layer this one isn't but um, they work very well together you put your items on the top and just felt normally you can get another layer underneath if you wanted it to be a bit thicker I'll just show you this one in action so here we are, the um, earth mat from the Makers. It is um, a very good height. It's a little bit lower than some of the others, but you could get another layer underneath if you wanted to. Um, again, it provides good resistance. It's nice and soft. It's not too noisy. So yeah, it's a very, very comfortable mat. And as I said, I have seen a lot of people with very good reports about this and they really enjoy it and they wouldn't use anything else. And again, I think you can probably use the cloth on it if you wanted to. Um, but these aren't terribly expensive and they, as I said, they are um, compostable as well. So that's really, really good from the makers. There we go. Oh, yes. And alongside with that, this is a um, makers sort of rubber silicon cleaning um, thing and you would scrape it across and that's how you would clean all the wool out. So this is a really good little tool and then it's just sort of all gathers up in there. I'm going to try it on one of my other mats in a minute and see how it goes. But along those lines of the base mat from the makers, I found these um, ironing mats on um, Amazon and they are extremely similar and you could probably use the top 
with it just like that and um, that was they weren't too expensive so I'll link those in the description below again you can't use these on their own you can use them with other mats on top or other layers on top and it would work quite well next up we have the wool buddy mat and uh, this is mine I use it now all the time this is my ultimate absolute favorite mat it's filthy because I use it so much I'll show you how I clean it it is firm dense brilliant it's square it's flat I found sometimes with the mats that slope off the edge um, your actual working surface area isn't that great um, yes they are a fair price but it's so worth it and um, I just use this all the time especially with the horses I make and things like that because I can put the legs in between sometimes I used to have these small foam mats and when I was doing a leg I'd put a little because in starter kits you get tiny little ones of these and I would put those between the legs but this is just the right height to put between legs it's so it's a wool buddy and this will be linked in the description below and it's worth the investment I mean it's I think they're about 20 22 pounds um but I thoroughly recommend it but along those lines I'll just get you the one that I made so this is my needle felting mat um, that I made myself and I will link the video at the end of how to make your own and it really wasn't difficult honestly and I'm not a wet felter but you have to throw a bit of water on it and move it around a bit but it wasn't hard at all um, and so I've made this and I've just started using it and it's in the colours that I wanted and I'm, I'm really happy with it but it gives me a new appreciation for the wool buddy and why the wool buddy is the price it is at because it took me quite a, a bit of effort to make this and quite a bit of wool as well so but I'm really pleased with it so if you want to try making your own mat which it cost me the wool was probably about six or seven pounds and then it took an afternoon of making and then you had to wait for it to dry it's good it feels really dense but it doesn't feel quite as dense as the wool buddy so for ease and not having to make your own the wool buddy is fantastic so the wool buddy it's um my absolute favorite from the fact that it's a really good size you can rest your hands on it so it's very ergonomic and it provides excellent resistance uh, when you're felting an item it's not too noisy again needles this is a fairly coarse needle it goes in really easily absolutely really one of the best ones for me so this is the uh, little rubber silicon thing and I'm just going to see how it went because this mat's filthy that's really good so it's gathered it all up in this um, silicon so yeah this works really well from um, the makers I thought I'd just show you my little mat in action oh, yeah really sweet really cute love it I think it'll felt down a little bit but um, compared to the wool buddy it's really quite similar although the wool buddy is a slightly bigger better shape for me but yeah really pleased with this so felters, I hope that has helped you try and understand all the different needle felting mats that are out there and what would be best for you. Just to summarise, a foam mat is a great one for a starter. You do get them in a lot of starter kits. They are a bit smaller, but cost wise, that would be great. It will last you probably about three, four, five months. And then if you're looking for a more long term one that's going to last you a lot longer, then I really recommend the Wool Buddy. And you can buy them smaller and you can buy them in different colours. And this one will be linked in the description below. Have you got a particular needle felting mat that you use that you could tell me about? Please put it in the comments below. I hope this has answered any of your questions. If you have any more questions, again, put them in the comments. Thank you for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.